everybody. Welcome to this podcast. I'm yours sincerely, Apostle Costas Friday. And this is the Truth and Life series video version. We are in the fourth season of the Truth and Life series, okay? All right, uh, without much hesitation, let's go straight to today's topic. Today, the text of our topic is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 4. All right, and it says that when you do your acts of charity, do it secretly. And God who sees in the secret will reward you in the open. God who sees things in the secret will reward you in the open. That's what that part of the scripture says. It says, every act of charity that you do in secret, the God who sees your acts of charity which you do in secret will reward you openly. Okay? Now that's the text for the message. And the title of the message, uh, which I'm about to deliver right now on uh, in the video format, is uh, The Passive Life of a Gospel Minister. The Passive Life of a Gospel Minister. Now, um, the purpose of releasing this message is for you to know that what makes you a gospel minister or what makes you a minister of God is not just what you do when the cameras are on. What makes you a gospel minister, what makes you a minister of God is not what you do when everyone is watching. In fact, more of the things you do when no one is watching are the things that validate your status as a gospel minister. More than the things you do when you are watching. How long is a Sunday service? Sunday service lasts for five hours. Five hours, or if the if the revival is so much, maybe seven hours from morning till almost evening. Seven hours on Sunday. Now that is seven over twenty-four. That's about um, that's about a quarter of a day, a quarter of twenty-four hours. Now the rest of the twenty-four hours, which is about three quarter of twenty-four hours, what? really goes on is your passive life what is your passive life you can come to church on sunday morning and minister okay i'm talking to everyone including myself all right because i'm not more righteous than everybody we are all sinners and, and god we are we are living through the message of god but we can try to live a good life okay a, a gospel message a, a sunday service can last for seven hours maximum sometimes if it's too if it's too heavy maybe 10 hours but i've never seen a, a sunday a sunday ministration or a sunday service that lasted beyond seven hours or 10 hours even if it's a special occasion let's say anniversary the re- remnant part of the day is about three quarter of the sunday or the saturday what goes on is your what your passive life and i say that what makes you a minister of god or a true child of god is not what goes on within the seven hours that people watch you online across the world across the globe and so on and so forth what makes you a real child of god and a real minister of god is what goes on when we are done what makes me a minister of god is not what is going on right now on the camera all right because this this video is going to last for a couple of minutes this is going to be one of my longest videos anyway it's going to last for a couple of minutes and after those minutes i'll turn off the camera and go right back to the passive mood what makes me a minister of god is what goes on after i've turned off this camera do you understand all right as a child of god it's very important we'll live a standard life and what standard are we talking about? We're talking about the the godly standards, okay? The godly standard. Understand? Praise the Lord. All right. So we are looking at what the passive life of a gospel minister. The Word of God is very important. We live a standard life. We live a standard life. We will live by godly standards, okay? There's a song we used to sing. Um, during our childhood, it's called standard living. We used, to, we used to call it standard lily, standard lily. But after a while, um, someone corrected us and said it's not actually standard, standard lily, standard lily. It's actually um, standard living, standard living. 
standard living, standard living. You know what I'm So, those of you that know that song, you know what I'm talking about. So, we need to live a standard life. You don't just live your life just like that. Okay? In Nigeria, Pigeon English, we call it anywhere belly face. Anywhere belly face. No, you don't live your life by the direction of your stomach. You know, you don't live your life by the direction your stomach face anytime or anywhere you are standing. If your stomach is facing the wrong direction, you don't follow the direction of your stomach. Understand? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are looking at... Alright, this is, this is going to be one of my longest videos, but don't worry, it's not going to be so long that you'll get bored. Uh, if you are interested in learning, if you are interested in learning, you would watch this video to the end. But if you are not interested in learning, if all you want to do in life is have fun, have fun, have fun, and you don't want to learn, you don't want to grow, you don't want to become someone better than you are right now, you can turn off this video and go to the videos that last for five minutes. But if you want to grow, if you want to learn, if you want to become a better person, most especially as a child of God, most especially as a minister of God, most especially as someone who is walking in the way, the truth, and the life, watch this video to the end. And I'm telling you, uh, by the time the video is coming to an end, you're not going to be the same person you were when you started the video. We have four in one messages in this video. Right? I prepared that I was going to deliver this video. Right to as many who desire to watch it. So get your writing materials because this is not just uh, one of those regular videos. This is actually a lecture. This is actually a major teaching video. All right. Now, as a child of God, you have two kinds of life. You have the active. Praise the Lord. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. All right. We are looking at um the two lives of a preacher we have the active life and the passive life and then we have two types of preaching we have active preaching and passive preaching just as we have active income and passive income that's also how we have active preaching and passive word preaching as far as you are a child of god in fact just the fact that you are a child of god or you say that you believe in god you believe in christ jesus you have your active life and your passive life Understand, and there is something known as active preaching and passive preaching. Active preaching is when, um, when I get to church on Sunday and I mount the pulpit and I carry the Bible and I begin to minister the gospel message for Sunday, or when I get to church on Wednesday and I pick up the, the microphone and the Bible and I minister on Wednesday. That is active word preaching, or any other day, maybe during a special program or so on and so forth. Active preaching is when I'm with the microphone and I'm ministering. But there is a preaching that is louder than what I say when I'm on that pulpit every Sunday or every uh, other day on which I minister. And that is my passive life as a preacher. What I'm doing even while I'm lying down on the bed in my house. Do you understand? What I'm doing if, even while I relax in the parlor in my, um, in my mansion. What I do, even when I'm not, you know, when I'm not even like, when I'm not even like in the in the mood, in in that spiritual mood. What I do, even when I'm in the flesh, these things send a lot of signals. Understand? These things send a lot of signals. Even the things I do when I'm in the flesh, not even when I'm in the in the spirit, they send a lot of signals to the people who are watching me and that is what is called passive preaching it's called what passive preaching all right listen very carefully every child of god is a gospel minister whether you are you have a ministerial title or not whether you went to bible school or not whether you you are, you are called a pastor whether you are called an evangelist whether you are called a bishop whether you are called an apostle whether you are called a prophet whatever you are or maybe you're just a simple sunday school teacher Whatever you are, or even maybe you're just a church worker, you are a choir member, you sweep the church, you clean the chairs, you um, carry the bag for the pastor, you, um, you just do simple menial jobs in the church. Listen very carefully. Even if you are the church gate man, as a child of God, you are 
a minister of God. You are not just the church gate man. You are the, you are the minister of God who is standing at the gate. You are the minister of God who is cleaning the chairs. You are the minister of God who is sweeping the floor. You understand? So every child of God is a gospel minister and it's your responsibility to preach the gospel actively or passively. Anybody can carry the microphone and start by the fall, uh, by the roundabout and preach the gospel and talk about Jesus and talk about Jesus and talk about Jesus. But whom you really are is not what you do while you're holding the microphone or while you're talking about Jesus. But when you turn off the mic and you walk out of the street, what do you become? That is your passive message. Many people do not give their life to Jesus. Not because they don't hear the active, uh, active, life, uh, active message of uh, those who are preaching the gospel, but they do not give their life to Jesus. They, they don't even accept the gospel because they pay a lot of attention to the, to the passive lives of people who call themselves ministers of God. And when your active life and your passive life does not balance out, there is something known, there is something called injustice. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is, there is an injustice. Mark my words. I say when your active life and your passive life as a minister of God does not balance up, there is what? There is an injustice. Yes, there is an injustice. And what happens? What happens? People will, will harden themselves towards receiving the gospel. People are more likely going to receive the gospel from a preacher whose uh, active life balances up with his passive life. Okay? Please and please, uh, before I continue, let me let you know that this uh, message is not a judgmental message. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not going to mention the name of any pastor or any church I know or anybody. I'm only teaching. And if you're a minister of God or you're a child of God at all, you're just a child of God who loves God at all, at all, this message is for you. Your passive life preaches the gospel, not just your active life. When you are in flesh, who are you? The Bible says in John, John chapter 1 verse 14, I think 14 or 16, it says, And the word was made flesh. Have you been able to convert the living word of God into flesh? Such that people can what? Can, can see God manifesting in flesh through your life. That is the importance of your passive life. You understand? Your passive life speaks louder than your active life. Your passive life as a preacher speaks louder than your active life, okay? Now, your passive, passive life, <coughs> excuse me, is a function of your habits. Your habits. Behavior upon behavior upon behavior combines together to yield habits. Habits upon habits upon habits combines together to yield character. And then character upon character upon character combines together to yield destiny. Amen? Alright, so, here are 10 important things a preacher or a minister of God, or in fact a child of God, should also do. Alright, or let's just call it 10 important ingredients of a passive life that's what preaches the gospel. Or 10 important ways to preach the gospel passively. Right? Okay, let, I think the best way to, to present it is to call it 10 important ways to preach the gospel passively as a minister of God. Number one. Number one, live a God-fearing life or live a God-fearing lifestyle secretly and also openly. Not only secretly, but also what? Openly. Live by godly standard. Be an example. Don't say, if someone offends you, turn the other cheek. But when someone offends you, you make sure you beat the person to pulp. You make sure you deal with the person. You make sure, you make sure, you make sure the person... The person does not leave the place without a mark on their body or without being rushed to the hospital. Do you understand? You understand what I'm saying? Live by example. Practice what you preach. Now that you are turning the other cheek does not mean that uh, if someone is committing a crime against you that you should not try to secure yourself. If someone commits a crime against you, forgive the person, don't retaliate, but call the police, okay? And one, of, one, one thing that is a crime is uh, intellectual property theft. Intellectual property theft is a, is a crime. If you steal my intellectual property, if you steal my intellectual property, I will forgive you, but I will, make, I will call the police for you. Alright? Now, that's aside. So, but live by example. Alright? Live by example. Practice what you preach. 
All right, that's the first important thing you should do. If someone offends you, if it's an offense that you can, if it's an offense you can forgive. If it's if it's not to up to the level of a criminal act, you know, so there is something known as an offense, an offense that is below the line. Sorry, a blow that is above the belt and a blow that is below the belt. Okay, if it's a blow that is above the belt, let it go, as if nothing happened. But if it's a blow that is below the belt, let it go. But call the words, call the attention of the officials of the law. All right. So live a God-fearing lifestyle secretly and openly. Live by godly standards. Okay, number two. Train up and raise up godly children and godly family. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. It says what? Train up a child the way he should go. And when he grows, he or she will not depart from it. Let your children grow up in a godly way. Let them grow by a godly standard. Don't have wayward children. Like Eli. Eli had two children. Their name was Hophni and Phinehas. And Hophni and Phinehas were not living by godly standards. And as a parent, I want to let you know this. This might shock you, but it's true. As a parent, if you don't train up your child very well, if you don't train your child up very well, you can receive judgment from God for that. You can receive judgment from God for not training up your children very well. So train up your child in the way he or she should go. I have children. I have biological children. Whether they are biological children or they are adopted children or they are even your children in church, train them up in the way they should go. As a minister of God, your children are like those who we are called to minister to. If you see someone doing the wrong thing and the Spirit of God leads you to rebuke them and you don't rebuke them, the judgment will fall upon you after they've what? After they've perished. Okay, so rebuke someone when they are wrong. Okay? Had it been Eli rebuked Hophni and Phinehas in a very strong way, what happened? Um, probably the judgment may, may not have fallen upon him. So, Train up and raise up godly children. I am not joking with the area of child upbringing. Your child is a representation of your future. So train your children well. Be very strict about godly things. Okay? And uh, also raise up a godly family. Raise up a godly family. Let your family be a representation of God. Uh, Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. It says that you can choose any God you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, Joshua was trying to let the children of Israel know that God was not forcing them to choose him as their God. God is not forcing you to choose him, to choose him as your God. You understand? God is not forcing himself upon you. He's only telling you to choose the right way. And what happens? Whatever choice you make, congratulations. But I choose that I and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. Okay? Alright, number three. Speak up against evil in the society. Speak up against evil in the church and also in the society. As a child, as a, as a minister of God, you are not only called for the church, you are also called for the society. The Bible says, the Bible did not say you are the light, uh, salt and light of the church alone. The Bible says that you are the salt and light of the world. Which means your calling goes beyond the church. Your calling does not stop within the limits of the church Amen. although you may prioritize you may prioritize the church sometimes or in many cases you may prioritize the church because you have to minister to your sheep and minister to those who you are ministering to but you must not also turn a blind eye to evil in the society you must condemn evil in the society when you see evil in the society you can speak up against it that's why i like preachers like uh, pastor tunde bakari and um a couple of other people that I can mention right now. These are preachers that can um, that can see something going wrong in the society. Hey, Pastor Boju Oyemade. Uh, these are people that you know they they, they actually um, they actually speak up against evil in the society. We also have the right, likes of Bishop Michael Konko and a couple of other people. There, there's a long list of them. When you see evil in the society as a minister of God, speak up against it. I speak up against evil in my society. When I see something going wrong in my society, I speak up against it. I don't keep quiet. I speak up against it. When I see something going wrong in the church, I speak up against it. Alright? I, I speak up against it. So, 
as a child of God, if you see even in the society, speak up against it. Because that is that is a sign that shows that you are a salt and light of the world. Okay? Psalm 94, verse 16, it says, Who shall what? Who shall rise up against the defenseless and against the weak people in the society? Who shall speak up against evil? When Goliath was challenging Israel, everybody kept quiet, but someone had to step up, speak up, and rise to the occasion. Who will step up, speak up, and rise to the occasion without fear, with courage, with strength, and with wisdom? Let that person be you, dear child of God who can watch this video, who is watching this video right now, okay? Number four, avoid bad association. Don't give excuses about this. Bad association is bad association, and bad association corrupts good manners. Avoid bad association. The Bible says that do not be deceived. There are, there are two parts of the Bible where, where the Bible says do not be deceived. Uh, God is normal. That's Galatians 6 verse 7. The other part says do not be deceived. Which means there is no excuse you will give. It's part of the seeds you sow so that you can become successful. Sow the seed of good association. Don't associate with people that can corrupt you. The Bible says that Dina was the daughter of Jacob, a person who was blessed by God, but she was associating with the wrong women she was associating with immoral women and what happened when it was time she she attracted the wrong attention she was a good girl but she was associating with what immoral women and she, and because she was associating with immoral women she attracted the wrong attention and when she attracted the wrong attention what happened we know the chain of events that followed that word action okay so Bad communication corrupts good manners. Avoid bad association. Number five, give your life to prayers and holiness. Be a prayerful and holy person. Prayer is not only what you say when you clasp your hand together and close your eyes and say, Father, we thank you for this, blah, 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 and then you round up with, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. When you pray, also pack up your prayers with words, with, with, answers that that align with the prayers okay you understand back up the prayer with answers that align with the prayers okay avoid what avoid living a prayerless life a prayers prayerless christian is a powerless christian live a life of prayer and holiness the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much if if on several occasions i pray for my country i pray for the country in which i have a citizenship the country uh, whose identity card, national identity card I have. I pray for the country I live in. If you live in Europe, pray for Europe. If you live in America, pray for America. If you live in Australia, pray for Australia. And if you live in Africa, pray for Africa. Okay, you understand? Be given to a life of prayer and holiness. Because you are not just the salt and light of your family. You are not just the salt and light of yourself. You are the salt and light of the, the geographical community you reside in. If you reside in Africa, you are the salt and light of Africa. If you reside in Europe, you are the salt and light of Europe. And so on and so forth. You understand? Now, let's continue. Help and defend the weak, vulnerable and helpless people in the society. There are people who are helpless. Don't help people who can pay you back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes people say that, okay, it's, 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 um, it, is, it is wise to help people who will pay you back. It doesn't pay to... No, no, no. If you only help people... Jesus, Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 6, He said, If you only love those who love you, then what kind of person are you? Help people who cannot what, pay you back. Love people who cannot love you back. Okay? That's what it means. So... Um, some people say, you know, I can't just carry so so and so amount of money and give it to so and so so set of people because this kind of people they are poor, they are broke, and they ain't gonna give me the money back. How am I gonna get my money back? That's not the issue. The, the Bible says that when you do your acts of charity, do it, and God who sees in secret will reward you in the open. You don't have to take, you don't have to go to CNN and, and let the whole world know that you. You gave some some people uh, people who suffered from earthquake in in Japan or in Haiti billions of dollars. You just have to keep it to yourself. Let you be let let you be people talking about it by themselves. Not you talking about it yourself. You understand? So defend and help the the weak, the vulnerable, and the helpless folks in society. Bible says Jesus says that whatever you do to the to the weak, the vulnerable, and the helpless people in the society, you are doing it to me. 
right? If you mock them, you are mocking me. And the Bible says that God, God cannot be mocked. But if you help them, you are what? Glorifying my name, okay? Number seven, shun ungodly practices in business and in the marketplace. What did I say? I said shun ungodly practices in business and in the marketplace. Some people say, yes, uh, I know I'm a Christian. I go to church every Sunday and I, and I pray to God. I give my tithe. I give my offering. I help the poor. But when it comes to business, I am, uh, when it comes to business, I am Scarface. I am Tony Montana when it comes to business. Okay, but if I'm in the church, I am Pope John Paul, the second, or the first, I don't know. I am Pope John Paul. In fact, if I, when I'm in the church, I am Pope Francis. Uh, when I'm in the church, I am Pope, Pope Felix. But when I come out of the church and I come to the marketplace, I am uh, Tony Montana. When I come out of the church and I come to the marketplace, I am, uh, I am the Godfather. When I come out of the church and I come to the marketplace, I am Niccolo Machiavelli. Don't mess with me. You know, these are not how a true child of God is supposed to be. You are supposed to be you are supposed to be uh, you are supposed to be the Jesus in church and the Jesus in the marketplace. Understand? Be the kind of person that people will say, you know what? Go to um, so so and so. Okay, brother, brother A, go to brother A's shop. In brother A's shop, he doesn't uh, cheat. He doesn't sell uh, substandard uh, goods. He doesn't sell stolen property. Go to his shop. He's a honest person. You understand? Should you should have a good report in the marketplace as a child of God? Your business should have a good report in the marketplace. All right, real life media and publishers we ensure that we have a good report in the marketplace by all means, by Bible standards. No bad reports in the marketplace. Stan's Foundation, which is a humanitarian organization, we ensure we have a good report in the marketplace. These are my own personal uh, marketplace activities. We ensure we have a good report in the marketplace. If you are in business, avoid ungodly practices. Avoid the um, dog-eat-dog mechanisms in the marketplace, okay? Avoid the things that ungodly people do. Avoid the things that satanic people do. Don't hire thugs to help you actualize one thing or the other. Do everything in a noble and honorable fashion. Respect the rights of other businesses in the marketplace. Don't be shen don't be a shenanigan. Be a good example. Even if you are making less profit, have a good name. The Bible says a good name is better than silver and gold. Avoid ungodly words, practices in the marketplace. If you live in a country where um, being a godly businessman is not very profitable, continue to set that standard until a point you come when others will say, look, I think God is blessing this man. Let us follow his example. Amen. It's all in your in your hand. You are powerful. All right. Number nine. Okay, number eight. Number eight. Shun immorality and corruption. Shun immorality and corruption. By the way, uh, Proverbs twenty verse twenty three. The Lord says that I hate false skills and, and and evil balances. I hate such things. God says I hate them. I, I don't like false skills. If that means as a businessman, if you are cheating people and if you are, you are, you are cheating other people, yeah, God hates it. God Himself will cause you to have uh, unfortunate circumstances and disadvantages in the marketplace when you live a lifestyle of cheating others. Okay. Now number nine, speak the truth always without fear or favor. When you see the truth of every matter. Speak the truth without fear or without favor. Whether you say the truth secretly or you say the truth publicly, speak the truth without fear or favor. Don't be afraid of what anyone might do to you if you say the truth. So it might be like, say the truth and we'll kill you. No, still do, do not be afraid. Still speak the truth. I must confess, I must confess, there are, there are some truths I've spoken during the course of my ministration when I first started full-time ministry that have actually put me uh, put me in harm's way. Yes, I've said some truth that put me in harm's way. I've suffered for saying the truth. Amen. This is a testimony. All right. I've suffered for saying the truth, but I'm not. Always, I'm not afraid of saying the truth. Even if my life is at risk for saying the truth, I'll still say the truth because the Bible says that it is by acknowledging the truth that you will want to get freedom. And the Truth and Life series is all about the truth. Okay. So speak the truth always without fear and without what favor. 
All right. If your own brother is doing the wrong thing, if your own brother is doing the wrong thing, tell your brother that what your brother is doing is wrong. If your own, if your own sister is doing the wrong thing, tell your own sister that what he's doing is wrong. If your son or your daughter is doing the wrong thing, tell your son or your daughter that what you are doing is wrong. Do you understand? If you are doing the wrong thing, tell yourself that what you are doing is wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is without favor. Then if you see someone that is your enemy and your enemy is doing the wrong thing and your enemy is someone that can actually uh, confront you and uh, fight you in a negative way for saying the truth, confront your enemy and still tell them that what they are doing is wrong and tell them that you are not afraid of them. You understand? Right? Intellectual property theft is wrong. It's a crime. It's not, it's not honorable. It's not noble. Stop it. Right? I'm not afraid. I'm saying the truth now. Have a good or peaceful marriage, right? A marital life. So have a good or peaceful marriage or marital life, okay? Right? Although there is no marriage in heaven, but here in the society, if you are married as a minister of God, there are some ministers of God who are not married, but if you are married as a minister of God, let your marriage be a ministry that blesses other people. Don't let your marriage be a bad example, okay? So these are 10 important things a preacher or a minister of God should do. All right, that's the first part of the lecture. Amen. God bless you. Now let's look at 10 things that can bring conflict and divisions in the church of Christ. 10 things that bring conflict and divisions in the church of Christ. 